a former Singaporean YouTuber has been released from jail and has most recently been seen going about doing a couple of interviews and podcasts where he's been recounting his experience in jail. And it seems like not too many people are happy about it. And we're going to talk about it today. So I actually did a video about this entire case when it happened, so you can go check that out to get a recap. Now in case you forgot, the former YouTuber was convicted in August 2022, and he was found guilty of offering cash to a minor for sexual services, attempted sexual exploitation of a young person, and filming himself engaging in sex acts with a man aged between 23 and 25. And for that, he served a jail term of 32 weeks, and he was recently released this year. Now earlier in March, the ex-convict posted a couple of videos on Instagram hinting at his return to the internet. And then he did something that anyone who is freshly out of prison would naturally want to do. Release a trailer announcing his return. He put together this montage of all the news coverage surrounding his case, and then he ended it off with this very ominous shot of him looking back at the camera. Not sure if that was supposed to be cool or meant to be a threat. I mean, an ex-convict releasing their own trailer like this? Yellow Ribbon Project could never. But it didn't seem to be a problem because many of his known associates were very quick to welcome him back with open arms. Like this influencer, this influencer, this one, this one, and this one, not forgetting this one, and this one, and this one. But then there were also others who didn't seem too pleased about this ex-convict's return. LOL, acting like he went to jail for theft. Are you not embarrassed? The fact that people think he deserves a second chance is concerning. People on Twitter didn't seem too pleased about this either. Every influencer that continues to associate with this ex-convict is just so ugly to me, like why are you still such great friends with a proven child groomer, are you crazy? The ex-convict posting edits of himself right after serving jail time for sexually assaulting minors proves that this man knows no limits to narcissism. Imagine trying to milk your jail time experience in an attempt to have a second chance in content creating. Bye. The ex-convict being welcomed back to the world of influencing and content creation with open arms is yet another clear example of how essay perpetrators can just move on with their lives even if they get convicted. The ex-convict molests people then come out made a teaser like he about to drop the album of the year. And when the ex-convict's trailer dropped on TikTok, people had some really interesting reactions. <laughs> Plenty of other TikTokers then came forward to share their thoughts about this ex-convict's return to the internet, and many of them also didn't seem too happy about this. In fact, one of these TikTokers also had very choice words to share. And the SG influencers who are out here fucking commenting on his video, welcome back, welcome back, and then deleting it later. Don't think I didn't see you, Fauzi. Damn, shots fired. No, cause why? This one trailer or what? Mans thought he was a Marvel character. He acting like he got out of jail for falsely stealing something. I'm confused at all the content creators showing support for him in the comments. I'm frustrated at how he showed no remorse throughout and now he's acting like his comeback deserves a documentary about his side of the story. His comment section was also very disturbing to read, the blindness to his offences. The audacity. Yeah, the jokes just keep writing themselves. So after self-launching his reintegration into society, the ex-convict then continued to post a bit more on social media, sharing about how he lost a lot of weight during his jail term, and also posting about how he's continuing to meet up with some of his friends as well. And then after this, the ex-convict seemed to have entered his Q&A era, where he continued to post a number of videos answering fan questions about his jail experience. First, he posted a video answering more questions about his weight loss, and then he went on to address his financial situation and how it was deeply impacted by the entire court case. Then he goes on to talk about how his entire jail term was healing for him. And then he also goes on to share a daily vlog of himself going to buy groceries. Throughout all of these videos, the ex-convict continued to promise that he would eventually come forward to share his entire side of the story, but people in the comments seem to be getting impatient. So you're back just to be a vlogs creator. The longer you delay to explain your case, the more insincere you look. I know, I know, I'll get there soon. And for this ex-convict, getting there soon meant posting a lot more content that wasn't really related to his side of the story. Instead, he posted a lot of motivational quotes, and even this photo of him cooking eggs that somehow spelled the words very soon. Now, later in April, the ex-convict then dropped a 50-minute tell-all video on Rumble, a right-wing video sharing platform. And the video was titled My Story. And then the video description says, After almost three years, I promised that I would tell my side of the story. That day has finally come. I invited two guests to come on too just to loosen myself up. It's been a while since I've done something like this, so here it is. If you watch, thank you. Thank you for paying attention to the details. So in the video, the ex-convict then explains the background of his case, all the police reports that were involved, and basically seemed like he wanted to set the record straight and reclaim the narrative. In it, he admitted that he knew one of his sugar babies was 17 years old, but did not know it was against the law. And then he says it was only when I was exposed and people were like, oh my god, it's against the law. Then I was like, oh shit, it's against the law. Um... Okay. And just for reference, commercial sex or paying for sex with persons under 18 is a punishable offence. Yeah, so this doesn't really put him in a good light at all. 
He also stressed that he was not going out of his way to look for 17-year-olds. He was not specifically looking for a certain age or waiting outside secondary schools looking for 17-year-olds. He saw these boys on Instagram that he found good looking that they just happened to be 17. So yeah, not too sure how to feel about a grown ass adult who's somewhat into younger guys, but the ex-convict goes on to explain in his video that he actually went through two different tests to prove that he's not a pedophile. He then goes on to share about how he had to deal with all of the reactions from his family and friends, and then he also explains how he felt that some of the news coverage about his entire case seemed to be pretty misleading. The media outlets were very misleading, okay, but the media outlets love a good clickbaity thing, right? So they put they just they just put the the whole act, you know, just the whole title: sexual exploitation of a child or young person. And then towards the end of the video, it also seemed like the ex-convict was apologizing to the victims, to the people that I messaged, right? Like it won't happen again. I'm sorry, you know. I wish I could take it back, but I can't. I wish you all the best in life. But after the video dropped, there was a news report that interviewed one of the victims, and it seemed like the ex-convict had yet to apologize to him. One of them was now 20 years old, said that he went public with his story back then so that the ex-convict would be held accountable for his actions, including lying in his public apology before being convicted. He said that the ex-convict will always be a predator to him. And then he goes on to say, all I cared about was that the truth eventually prevailed, so besides that, I have nothing and no opinions on the ex-convict. But to me, he is always going to be someone who targets minors and that will never be alright. Now, if we're going by this interview, it does kind of put into question whether or not the information that the ex-convict presented in this 50-minute tell-all video is truthful or 100% accurate. So after the tell-all video, the ex-convict then went on to follow up with yet another video explaining how he wouldn't be returning to YouTube because his channel was terminated and that means he wouldn't be able to create a new one. But he did go on to share that he was about to start a podcast and was looking for people to join him. And the requirements were if you have or are polarizing opinions, questions about jail, a huge personality, over 21 years of age, and usually free in the evenings. If you have all of that, the ex-convict wants you. And since then, the ex-convict has been going on what I think is his redemption tour because he's been appearing in a couple of podcasts and doing interviews about his entire court case and jail experience. And I guess it's because maybe even though he cannot create any more YouTube channels, he can still appear on other channels. Who knows? And even though the ex-convict had plenty of supporters in the comment section, there were plenty of others who seemed to be getting the ache from his redemption tour. Why does the ex-convict still have a platform though? The fact he is getting invited to podcasts is really disturbing and disgusting. Can y'all interview me also? I just got released. Same charges as him. Um, I'm not sure about that. So I did watch a couple of the ex-convicts interviews and there seemed to be a number of recurring themes throughout. Normally he would go into a recap of his entire case and the charges that he faced as well as the entire process of the investigation. He would then also call out the media for their misleading news coverage. That's technically the charge lah. Right. Like you know the overarching charge. Right. But they don't talk about the detail. Like the detail is not the headline. When you say out the 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 header, it, it sounds, sounds like, like I had sex with kids. Okay, okay. And then he went on to share about the test he did to prove that he was not a pedophile. Everyone's so interested about the pedo test. I am interested in a yeah. pedo test. Uh, what? So, <laughs> no, like what? You put Don't a stick. Take it, <laughs> like the kid just walked in, just <laughs> <laughs> they hang a bell, your dick, and see what happens or what. I don't know. <laughs> he would often then explain the entire legal process of his case and then explain how he didn't have enough funds to take it to trial. And then there would typically be a section of the interview where he would go into details about prison life and how it was like for him. Jail, uh, the toilet system damn good. Uh. Oh yeah. Like the switch. Damn good. Never clock. Bro, you can throw orange down there and flush, it will go through. The prisoners make a lot of rules. So like I said, don't don't shower yeah. in the middle of the night or don't use the flush or like don't eat a banana hole. What is what? that? Yeah. Oh, oh. So I gotta eat it from the side. Uh. I happy happy, right? <clears throat> no, you have to break it. <laughs> oh, I see, I see, I see. Because if you eat the oh. whole, it's gay. And in some of these interviews, the ex-convict seemed pretty keen to have his story go viral. Yeah. So let me just clear the air. And I know people are gonna, we should cut this part out and make it a TikTok, it'll go viral, okay? <laughs> but one thing that definitely stood out to me was how often the ex-convict would go out of his way to plug his podcast. So so what were the other right. characters in yourself? Oh, That's so many. It. This podcast is not enough. You're gonna need to listen <laughs> oh, to my shit. podcast for that. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanna hear more details, tune in to... Stop where eh. Stop making use the of details. me. Eh. <laughs> So again, I'm not quite sure whether or not this entire podcast interview tour that the ex-convict is doing is part of his plan to hold himself accountable or whether or not it's just another way to accelerate his return to the spotlight. Now, I'm all for ex-convicts being given a second chance and being able to reintegrate into society if they are allowed to, but coming back to the spotlight to regain one's fame and influence is a whole other topic of discussion. I guess there's a lesson here about how we should be more mindful of the types of personalities and influences that we platform or give our attention to, and definitely to be mindful of the potential parasocial relationships that form. And as for this ex-convict's plan to re-enter society, I just hope there's no more trailers involving an adventure level threat. YOLO Say no no YOLO YOLO 
you only live once.